and they're off. A slightly awkward jump, but a fast jump from Bathrat Leon, who leads early. The Japanese raider from Shindit, the leader going off very quickly. Order of Australia on the outside, their modern games in the all blue. Bayid settled in fifth place in the blue white epaulette stripe cap, worn by Jim Crowley to the outside of Alcohol Free. And then Angel Blur at the rear of the field as they cover the first two furlongs in the Qatar Sussex Stakes. Group 1, 2022, and Bathrat Leon leading the way. Shinded in second. Modern Games around the inside of Order of Australia. Then Alcohol Free to the inside of the 6-1 to one on favourite Bayid and Angel Blur at the back of the field. Heading on towards the halfway stage and the turn into the home straight. Bathrat Leon out in front. Ryusi Sakai out in front by a length and a half. Two Shinded in second. Modern Games is third. Then Order of Australia. Followed by Alcohol Free and Baid. They're both being held up off the pace. And finally Angel Blur. Down the home run entering the final three furlongs in the Sussex. Bathrat Leon leads the way. Shadowed by Shinded. Order of Australia about to be produced by Ryan Moore. Baid on the extreme right cruising at the moment as you might expect. Modern Games under pressure at the cutaway. Alcohol Free exploring a run on the far side. Bathrat Leon uh, just gains a little bit of momentum momentum there from the cutaway leads by two lengths chased by modern games and here is Bayid now ask the big question on the outside Bayid cutting them back modern games putting up a fight but Bayid oh this horse has got gears that other horses do not possess and it's nine from nine Bayid and a canter it wins the Qatar Sussex Stakes from modern games alcohol free running on Bayid has just brought in his unbeaten run to nine with an authoritative win in the Sussex Stakes Jim Crowley of course was on board what was that like Oh, some feeling. It really was. I mean, he's just, he's skipped so relaxed. The race went perfectly. Um, he sort of came into the race between the three and the two, just unbelievable. He just cruises into it. And if anything, he, he just, when he hits the front, he thinks he's done enough a little bit. And I gave him a couple of taps today because there's a big roar from the crowd. And I just felt when he hit the front, he just started to shut down a little bit. Not in a bad way. It's just, it's just if you see his demeanor after the race, that's just, he thinks it's a piece of work. It takes nothing out of him, essentially. Nothing out of him. He hardly blew afterwards. And um, look, he's a horse of a lifetime. And it's a testament. I've said it before, Sheikh Hamdam's breeding operation to breed a horse like this. And it's, it's lovely Sheikh Ahis is here watching it. And Sheikh Hamdam would be so proud. You've ridden some very, very good horses. Is this clearly the best? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've always... They're all different. The horse who won it a few years ago in Mahatha was brilliant. Never really got a chance to shine um, other than that day. But listen, this fellow is just something else. And uh, it's great to be a part of it. You could actually see that point where he thought, like, I don't know if here his ears went, didn't he? It just, it's he, obvious. He's, he's just got a great... After the race here, he was like he was in his stable. But, you know, testament must go. Michael Hills rides him. Ricky looks after him. And William and Maureen have just... Had, brilliant trainers aren't they and they've just done a marvellous job with him and William keeps saying enjoy it <laughs> it's easy to enjoy afterwards <laughs> yeah I'm sure you could say the same thing straight back to William couldn't you yeah exactly <laughs> but no I suppose we've got to make the most of it and hopefully he can you know run a big race at uh, at York I don't see his 10 furlongs being a problem for him um, yeah looking forward to that was that in your mind at all today? Were you thinking about that? That extent because it's a new frontier, isn't it? Next time at York. Yeah, for sure, and it is, and I, it doesn't worry me. And I, I was obviously I didn't want to give him a hard race, but on the second second time, yeah, he, he did shut down a bit, a bit in front, but he didn't blow after the race. He's had an easy time, and you know, William gave him a lovely run in now to York, and had a forty. The bit I hadn't seen before was his entrance into the pre-parade where he kind of burst in and they could barely sort of hold him and he was coltish and then he comes into the paddock and he just sort of, it's like a flick, a switch flicks and he was just completely professional. Is that typical him? Yeah, well we hadn't noticed him do that before but maybe he keeps hearing people talking about him being a stallion so... <laughs> <laughs> well not yet, please. <laughs> no, but look, it was a great performance today and a pleasure to be a part of it all. Many congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, I think William Haggis will have had some moments to reflect now on Bayade's victory in the Sussex Stakes, extending his unbeaten run and winning with a lot of comfortable authority. How are you feeling now? Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it was a, seemed a smooth race. I mean, I need to look at it again because it's hard to watch. And, but, uh, yeah, he did, he did it well enough. It's hard to watch objectively, isn't it, when you've got that much invested in a horse that good? Yeah, and, he, and he, he's sort of bringing his own pressure now because he's never been beaten. 
and you know with two more races left in his life it's now looking possible that only possible that he might remain so and that will be two more ten days but but quite frankly I said to Jim we haven't got long left with him and you know we'll we'll struggle to find another like him so uh, let's enjoy him while he's here and we're really we're trying to do that all of us everyone at home we just keep working and don't really bother about him Yes, as Jim said that you said that to him and I was thinking you were probably saying it partly to yourself as well. But Possibly, yeah. Shea Gears has been saying, I've been saying all day to her, are you calm? And she said, I'm calm, William. I don't think you are, though. <laughs> but I am I'm relatively calm. Yeah. I've just spoken to Shea Hiss and she is right. in incredibly calm and she believes so much in this horse. Absolutely. And, you know, we all know that, that this is what her father bred all these horses for to find one like this and and that's the sadness but wonderful for her to have a, a, a boom horse to enjoy in a relatively fledgling owner's life. Mm. The significance of it is huge and she was going through back back through the pedigree and I feel it both for her and her family of course but also for British racing when yeah. you think about what a gift that was to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so thinking ahead to a new frontier, 10 furlongs. Jim seems to be pretty confident. How are you feeling about it? Still the same. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 look, I, I think we were wrong not to try it. Mm. And I think he travels so well that I think it would be exciting. He, he's, he thought he'd done enough, didn't he? Quite, <laughs> quite he a long said, way out. He said he had to give him a couple today mm. because he said the roar from the crowd and he pricked his ears and he thought, oh, hey, you know, you don't want to be pulling up yet. But, uh, you know, I think, I think York will suit him well and hopefully we can get in there in one piece and in good form and then we can enjoy it. Tell me about the prelims because I've never seen him as excitable as that and I asked you about it and you were really phlegmatic about it. I don't remember him doing that prior to the QE2, all the glorious stakes last year. Is that something that has increased as he's got older and become well, more of a stallion? I think they, they obviously get more colty as they get older. But look, he, he's fine once you get going. I think it's the hanging around that he doesn't like. And we saddled him in the stables at Newbury and at Ascot. It's impossible to do that here, you know. And so it's all a bit new. Uh, and we'll work something out for York. And, and it, it's not a big issue. And, you know, Angus said he hadn't seen him like that. But, but we have. You know, if, if a filly floats in front of his box door, he, he gives her a, a good morning. <laughs> OK, so you've got the walk over the nose mile to deal with. But the thing that really impressed me was having seen him do that, the moment he came into the paddock, it was like a switch flicked in his mind. And that's the beauty of it. You know, he knows what it's all about. Coming in the paddock, he was like an old man, you know, just walked round. And when Jim got on, didn't bother, lobbed away down to post. So. So it's there, it's just, it's nothing, Lydia. I don't make a big deal of it. No, 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 that's fine. And finally, can you sum up the meaning of the horse for you and your team, this latest success? Well, it's, it, it's, it's fantastic for us to, to win a race of this quality. I've never won the Sussex before, we have never won it. And uh, it it's boosts our chances of going up the trainer's table, which is very important because Balding and Gosden usurped us yesterday and we fell, fell apart yesterday but we're now ahead of them and only about five million behind Charlie Appleby. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not thinking about it. Men not at all. Not at all. No, it didn't cross your mind. Many congratulations. Thanks, Lydia. Thank you. <laughs>